All right, friends, welcome. We'll begin with our prelude and I'll ask you all to mute, please, uh, yes. during the service, for most of the service. Nope, nothing was Welcome everyone to worship in the name of Jesus Christ on this second Sunday of Advent 2020. We're glad you are with us and especially if you haven't been here before or not often, we're in particular um, welcoming you and we hope that you'll feel the warmth and the invitation of this community of Christ. Um, here we are gathered on Zoom and um, some of us do this every day, others not so often. So a couple of quick reminders about using Zoom for uh, a service like this. Um, for most of the service, as I just said, we'll invite you to stay muted um, just so that there's not extraneous noise and so that people can hear the liturgists or the musicians. Um, there'll be a couple of points in the service where we will invite you to unmute. And we who are managing the Zoom call cannot unmute you. You have to do that yourself. So if you um, are at the passing of the peace, we'll invite you to unmute and pass peace, say hi to others. Um, and uh, maybe later on in the service as well. But that is something that you'll have to do. Click the mute or unmute button. It's usually in the lower left of your screen. Um, for much of the service, there will be one or two people leading, um, but for some places, like at the passing of the peace, you might want to go to what's called gallery view and be able to see a, a grid of multiple windows of other people in the on a computer and on most devices in the upper right of your zoom screen, you have a choice of how to view and if you click gallery view instead of speaker view, it will show you um, more of the people on the screen, you probably won't be able to fit the whole congregation on at once, but you can see multiple folks and you can page through those screens. I will also invite you, if you have not yet, to gather communion elements. You might want to find bread or something um, uh, to use as bread for this service. We will take communion later on in the service um, and something to use for the cup. Um, whatever you have is fine. Um, it will become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ shared in his community. So there's no requirement to do something um, special for this. But if you haven't yet got something to have later in the service, you might want to do that now. And with that, we will move on to our lighting of the Advent candles and we'll proceed with worship. What's going on in the second half? All creation holds its breath as we wait for God to reveal steadfast love. In this pandemic, we know separation, heartache, and death. We long for solace. And we hear the words of Isaiah, 
Comfort, comfort my people. Behold your God. We light this candle of peace in the knowledge that God is steadfast. The Holy One will deliver the message of peace through the Son, who shows us how to be with one another and spread peace to all. Let us pray. Lord, we meditate on the peace candle. We feel a calm wash over us in this hour. We are not alone. Help us open ourselves to the needs of others and in our expressions of comfort in your name to walk in your light through the wilderness and together to be at peace. Amen. Come and listen, come and sing, come and tell how the name beyond all names, carpenter of all creation, prepared to visit earth by sending prophets and forerunners and choosing a people, a place, a time and a day to risk being born. Come and listen, come and sing, come and tell. How Joshua of Nazareth, Jesus named liberator, savior and God with us, was cradled by low status parents in a small town far from the centers of power in a super empire. Come and listen, come and sing, come and tell of birth and growth, teaching and healing, betrayal and death, the day of resurrection and the coming of the spirit. Come, come and, and worship God. God.
prepared the way for Jesus, and we are called to do the same in every aspect of our lives. Where are those places in your life where you can make amends, encourage reconciliation, help someone else with your acceptance and encouragement? With willing hearts, let us ask God to show us. Life-changing spirit, as we prepare the way of Christ, outline the contours of our repentance in our life together as church, in our relationships, in our homes and beyond, that our lives may be turned around more than we bargained for, but not less than we dared to hope. Through Jesus Christ, amen. If we think we do not need to heed John's words, we fool ourselves. If we receive the gracious offer to let God soften the places where our lives have hardened us, God's light will shine more brightly through us. Friends, believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, we are immersed in forgiveness, grace, and new life. Let us share his renewal and peace with each other. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. With you. With you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace of Christ be with you always. Peace to Riley. It's great that we just had the peace of Christ because this week the theme for Advent is peace. Um, some would say that peace is the absence of conflict or fighting. Um, some would say it's a sense of unity or calm. It's also something that starts within and radiates outwards. Um, we know people who are peacemakers and Jesus in the book of Matthew says that blessed are the peacemakers. And for us to be peacemakers in the world, it has to start with our own inner peace. And some people might say that inner peace or peace in general is as close to us as breathing. So what I would invite you to do is to take a deep breath in, breathe in four counts and breathe out eight. And do that a couple of times. Don't we already feel more at peace? My mind is clear and ready for worship. And so what I would invite you to do throughout this week is anytime you're, you might feel conflict, inner conflict or conflict with somebody else, take a moment to step back and breathe. And then also think about how does peace within your own heart help to create peace in the whole world? And to really think about what world peace might look like. Let's pray. Dear God, please help us to understand peace and to share it with others. We wait for Jesus to be born with hope and with peace. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem 
and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended, that her penalty has been paid, that she is received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out. Clear the Lord's way in the desert. Make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level and rough terrain, a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. A voice was saying, call out. And another said, what should I call out? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up and the flower withers when the Lord's breath blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flower withers, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here is the Lord God coming with strength with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and lift them onto his lap. He will gently guide the nursing ewes. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning is from the gospel according to Mark. Let us listen as we welcome John into our lives today. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way, a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make God's paths straight. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Well, now that we have lived in Nashville for quite a while and have enjoyed a lot of concerts, I have learned that a good opener at a concert can be a revelation. There are great bands I've seen in half empty rooms because they started an hour or more before the headliner. And sometimes they were actually better than the group they were supporting. A good opener can provide that transition from whatever I am feeling or thinking about or worrying about in the parking lot to being totally receptive, ready for the main event. With a great opener, I can forget everything and really commit. John the Baptist was a great opener for Jesus. When you're going to say unexpected, challenging, and even treasonous things like Jesus did, if you're going to make statements and preach sermons that encourage some while threatening the comfort and power of others, when your goal is not to be a crowd pleaser, but more of a God pleaser, and that is an inexact science at best, it's a good idea for someone to go out and loosen up the audience before you get there. John was perfect for that. 
weird enough to draw people outside the city with his scratchy clothes, his simple eccentric lifestyle, clear-eyed and committed to his work. He was uncompromising. When he needed protein, he'd pop a grasshopper and wash it down with wild honey, which he probably got reaching into a tree with his bare hands, fighting off the bees. And some of this wild and lonely stuff is probably Mark the storyteller. There could be some hyperbole in this description of John. It's not likely that everyone in Judea and all the people in Jerusalem went out, but it doesn't seem inaccurate to say that John had a reputation. He stood out among the magicians and false prophets and itinerant rabbis of his time. People wanted to check him out. They wanted answers. So they dared hope he might have something new to say. They made their way out to the banks of the Jordan River and John did not let them down. Day laborers, wealthy people, foreigners, beggars, all making their way to see. John was more than an opener. Some scholars have suggested he was the main event. And Mark himself says that Jesus' ministry didn't begin until after John's arrest. Something about what John said spoke to a lot of people. His daring, the way he knew the Torah, his passion, wild, not worried about appearances, it made them stop. The trek to the Jordan took them outside the city, away from the Roman guards, so they could take John in. They could stand and, and gawk and catcall or watch closely, listen. John fed right into the burning hope that some Galilean would rise up against Rome and save the people. He had reached a level of faith and impassioned speech that reminded people of the ancient prophets. He resonated with what they had been taught in the synagogue. And he did talk about the one who was coming, the stronger one, and we're not sure he knew he was preparing the way for his cousin, but that didn't matter. What mattered to John was following the pulse of his inner conviction, his heart, mind, and body on fire to follow the will of his God, whatever that meant. Jesus, on the other hand, had to make this unimaginable transition from a private life to a public life. As a carpenter, he had probably spent his days contributing to the support of his family by taking jobs near and far, wherever there was work, something to be built. This took him all over Nazareth, but his time had not come. He watched and he learned. It's hard to imagine that he didn't visit nearby cities like Capernaum, Magdala, Tiberius, Sepphoris, and he would have seen the vast economic disparities, the poverty, the exploitation of women and children, Roman oppression, religious hypocrisy. He knew about his cousin's preaching and he too felt the anger of the ordinary citizen. He would taste the bile rising in his throat when he'd see a beggar kicked in the streets or an elderly woman with her hands out because her husband had died, a child with no family living in corners and learning to be cruel to avoid the sexual advances of predators. But it wasn't his time until it was. Then it happened as smoothly as water sliding off a dove's back. John baptized Jesus, and it all began. Jesus didn't stand in the river and take people by the hand and support their backs with his arms as they went down under the water. Jesus helped them step back onto dry land, 
when it was time to help someone repent, he didn't go to the river. He let his attention, his power, his presence sweep over them gradually like a warm, wet wave until they were immersed, baptized in his spirit. It's so often about timing in our lives too. We can hear something one day and it passes right over us. We can hear it another day from someone else said in a slightly different way and it slides right into the heart. Not the seat of our affections, but that deep place within us where our life-giving energy rests, the heart in the ancient Greek mind, where we are able to take it in. Some days the door to the heart is more open than other days. We don't always know or perceive how that works. It has something to do with what we are willing to let go of about ourselves and how deeply that thing is buried, how much we think it's a part of us, a part we can't let go. It has something to do with how much pain we have endured and how much that pain has made us ready to change, to heal. It has something to do with things we may not know because they are buried deep in our DNA and we look for them in dreams and therapy and art, in the language of metaphor and symbol. The mystery of, of timing is multivalent and the waters of our lives flow endlessly. The poet Anne Sexton wrote a poem called Rowing, part of a collection of poems she entitled An Awful Rowing Toward God. Toward the end of rowing, the poet reaches her destination, an island she calls God. Sexton writes, I am rowing, I am rowing, though the oarlocks stick and are rusty and the sea blinks and rolls like a worried eyeball, but I am rowing, I am rowing, though the wind pushes me back, and I know that that island will not be perfect. It will have the flaws of life, the absurdities of the dinner table, but there will be a door, and I will open it, and I will get rid of the rat inside of me, the gnawing pestilential rat, God will take it with his two hands and embrace it. John the Baptist was and is a great opening act. Opening Advent several inches more for us. He invites us to a place of confession, to a river of truth, where our hearts and lives are made ready for the stronger one. He shows us a door and asks us to open it so that God can embrace whatever is gnawing at our insides. He offers us baptism so that we are ready to gather around the most absurd of all dinner tables, a table still available to us in the chaos of a pandemic, with technology that reduces us to little boxes on a screen but cannot shut us down. Even now, our hearts, our energy, our spirits can pour out and we can feel this movement of the spirit among us and within us, calling us to life, calling us to heal, calling us to serve, because here, the stronger one, Jesus, is our host, and he is our guest, and he is the meal, offering himself once more so that we can take him into our bodies, our cells, our minds, and find him deep within. And the show 
has only just begun. Now we have the joy, the very great joy, of introducing five, four, five, <laughs> I'm not going to count anymore. I keep getting it confused. New members in the midst of this time, we have new members to introduce to you. The session met this morning and invited them in and received them, voted them in. And now uh, Pam Reese, our membership chair, is going to present them to you and then we'll have a brief liturgy of reception for them. On behalf of the session, I, I'm thrilled to present Kaylin Bursch, uh, membership by Reaffirmation of Faith, and her sponsor is Kelly Blankenship. Then Janine Garner by Reaffirmation of Faith. She is sponsored by Georgie Ann Chapman. Then Mallory Schott, who is Sam Williams' sister, by Reaffirmation of Faith, sponsored by Amy Lentz. Then Ben Voss, by Letter of Transfer from Telos at Southminster, sponsored by Camille and Ron McNutt. And Desiree Dyer, who is married to Ben, by Baptism and Affirmation of Faith. We also welcome into fellowship, although not membership, uh, the Reverend Lisa Herman. And Annie McClure will tell you about her. So we'll turn it over to our sponsors in just a second. But first, we'll have this 
this um, brief liturgy. Um, it's still going on. It's live. Probably Everybody could, could mute yourselves for a moment, and we're going to trust that the uh, that our new members will say yes. <laughs> In baptism, you were claimed by God and marked as Christ's own forever and joined to his body by the Holy Spirit. You come to us then not as strangers, but as friends in Christ and members of the household of God. We rejoice that you now desire to join with this congregation in the worship and mission of the church. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for calling us to be your people and joining us to Christ's body, the church. We praise you for leading these new souls to this congregation. Empower us by your spirit that we might love one another as Christ loved us, honoring him in all that we say and do. And so I would just ask you, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from, from evil and renounce its power in the world, do you? We do. Yeah. Yeah. And will you join us in being Christ's faithful disciple, obeying Christ's word and showing his love as best you can? Will you? Will. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. I challenge and invite all of you all to remember your baptisms with Desiree's being fairly recent. I just want to share that Pam and I got to baptize Desiree just the other day, about a week ago. We did it safely, of course, in the sanctuary. So that was a true joy. And know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you and with you. Amen. Amen. So we'll turn it over to the sponsors now. Um, let's see. How should we do this, Pam? Do you have a... We could just start... No Let's, Let's begin, begin with Kelly and Kaylin. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kelly Blankenship, and I am a sponsor for Kaylin Birch. It's my honor to introduce her to all of you. Um, after moving to Nashville in 2018, Kaylin searched around a lot of different places and visited a lot of different churches before, against all odds, finding second in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, Kaylin works for Schneider Electric as a continuous improvement manager, and uh, she worked for them for a few years also in Costa Mesa, California, before she moved here. She has a bachelor, uh, bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and an MBA from Belmont, and uh, Kaylin uh, enjoys travel and food and her golden retriever, Wilson, who I hope to hopefully meet after this pandemic is over. So. Um, we are so glad to have Kaylin with us. Uh, next, uh, Georgian and Janine. I'm so happy to introduce Janine to you. Um, she uh, grew up in Woodbridge, Connecticut, and um, I believe was an Episcopalian at that time when she was a child. And um, she met her husband um, at Old Dominion where she went to college. His name is Brad. They have a lovely daughter named Allie who's in the confirmation class. And they um, have been going, coming to um, second for a while, um, several years, but have um, decided now that since um, Allie is going through confirmation, it's a good time to join. And uh, I'm so glad she is with us. She um, um, helps keep running Mother to Mother. And that's a nonprofit organization that Voice Grata has, benefit, has benefited. Um, and um, she makes sure that young, young mothers have the equipment they need for their baby to be safe and in good hands. And she's worked mightily hard through this pandemic to be sure that those things are given. Um, they have two dogs. One is a dachshund, I know. I think the other is a lab, but you might need to correct me. Or you can ask Janine. 
Um, I'm so glad you're with us and I know everyone will love getting to know you. Uh, next, Mallory and Amy. Uh, we welcome Mallory Schott to Second Presbyterian Church. Mallory is the sister of Sam Williams and has had several visits to Second Presbyterian in the past. Uh, she has searched high and low for a church home similar to Second Presbyterian, closer to where she lives, but of course, none can compare. Mallory is married to Eric Schott. They have been married for the past nine years. Mallory and Eric were married right here at Second Presbyterian by Jeannie Hunter. They have two children. Their oldest is Henrik, who is four years old. Their youngest was Logan, who passed away at birth this past fall. They have two dogs, Petey and Lexi. Mallory is a nurse at St. Thomas West. She is currently completing her BSN from Chamberlain College of Nursing. Now, in her spare time, she enjoys spending time with family and taking walks with her family. Mallory is joining Second because she is interested in raising her son at Second, worshiping with her family at Second, and being involved on a deeper level with her community. So thank you, Mallory, for your interest and for joining our community. Great. Um, Camille, how about introducing Ben and Desiree? All right, um, I'm Camille McNutt and um, I'm introducing Ben and Desiree, Ben Voss and Desiree Dyer. Um, ben and his family are joining Second after many years of searching for a church home. Um, he has been a member at Woodland Presbyterian and did serve on the session there and got to know Trice there and uh, has been friends with Trice and Paul after working with Trice at Woodland. Um, he has met many other friends from Second already and they have actually been coming to, to Second for a long time too. So um, they've really enjoyed getting to know many people including other former Trinity members um, at Second. And um, so Ben grew up in Minneapolis where he got to see the twins win the World Series twice. Um, he went to Wheaton College in Illinois and then worked in the Billy Graham Center on Wheaton's campus from 98 to 2002. Um, his background is in counseling, um, but his job with junior achievement was ended by COVID and he's transitioning from counseling students to counseling adults in financial planning. So um, Ben has a daughter named Clover who is in seventh grade at St. Joseph and uh, plays flute in the band there. And she's really looking forward to being part of our youth group. And uh, Ron and I really enjoyed meeting her as well as Ben and Desiree. Um, Desiree Dyer is from New York, New Jersey. Um, she was in her, the past in a renowned marching band in Ohio when she was a teenager playing um, saxophone and clarinet. And she also played oboe. Um, she's currently an ATM repair person, so we can all call on her for some of that, I think. She's been very busy recently with that. Um, and uh, Desiree has studied Buddhism for many years. Um, ben and Desiree met in 1990, and they dated in 91, and then she moved away to Ohio, and they didn't see each other again for 20 years. Um, and Desiree always says that he left her for Jesus because Ben had a religious conversion experience about six weeks after she moved away and then just basically had a hard time keeping in touch with her after that. But they reconnected and married in 2013. Um, and Clover has enjoyed a great relationship with Desiree, um, which is one of the big surprises and great surprises of Ben's life. Um, the fact that we're a more like community is really important to Ben and Desiree um, and the social justice work of our community is important to them, along with our willingness to keep working on our own spiritual development. So Ron and I, I have to say, had, didn't really know them when we became their sponsors and we're truly um, gratified and blessed to have a 45 minute phone conversation with them and look forward to getting to know them better. And um, so I want everyone to join me in welcoming them and the family. And we're really blessed to have them. 
Great. And, and Annie, if you'd introduce Lisa to us. Here we go. <laughs> I uh, had so much fun meeting Lisa over FaceTime to welcome her to Nashville and especially to Second Presbyterian Church. Lisa is a new member of the Presbytery of Middle Tennessee, which is why she can't become a member at Second Pres, actually. Uh, she is ordained in the PCUSA, so like a number of us uh, who attend Second Presbyterian Church but are ordained and serve in other kinds of ministries, um, we welcome Lisa's participation at Second Pres and want you to get to know her. She grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. She recently moved to Nashville from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Lisa is the newest member of the chaplain team at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, bringing with her years of hospital chaplaincy experience, this is year 12, and an absolute love for pastoral care. Lisa uh, has pre previous connections to uh, 2PC, which is why we have ended up welcoming her this morning. She was a YAV, a young adult volunteer in Guatemala and Peru um, before attending seminary in Louisville, Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. When she was in Louisville, she worked at the Mission Service Recruitment Office at the Presbyterian Center. Um, we hosted a YAV program here at Second Pres for many, many years, and Susan Brantley every year would take that team of um, volunteers up to the Presbyterian Center to see the workings of the center there, and uh, when Lisa was working there, Susan brought her group, and Jeff Moles was a part of that um, YAV group that year, uh, so she and Jeff uh, became friends and she remembers meeting Susan Brantley. Um, so when Lisa was considering moving to Nashville, she contacted Jeff and asked him where she might worship. And uh, so we're grateful to Jeff for that great recommendation to come to 2PC. Lisa likes to play trivia over Zoom and wait for it, Lisa is a puppeteer. I had the privilege of meeting a sweet friend on FaceTime named Sakatash. She has other friends that I'd like to meet sometime. And I hope that she will introduce those friends to us all at our next live 2PC Youth Mission fundraiser, or maybe even before. So heads up, Maggie and James. <laughs> um, welcome, Lisa. We uh, look forward to getting to know you more and we will keep you in prayer as you do your good chaplaincy work at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Folks, I heard that some people couldn't see the new members um, when we were doing that earlier. So let me quickly just highlight them for you. Um, here's Kaylin, can wave hi. Hi, everyone. And here's Janine. Hello. And Mallory. Thanks, everyone. Well, why don't we give them, since we can't run around and shake hands and give hugs, let's give them a nice... Hey, welcome. We're so grateful that you are among us and we will now move to our, our uh, celebration of communion, sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Friends, God's banquet is coming. There we go. Huh. All right. Too many things on the screen, apparently. Friends, God's banquet is coming. That time when we await the joy of that communion, 
when all will gather from north and east and south and west, a banquet where the rich and the powerful will sit at table with the weak and the poverty stricken, a table where young and old will learn from each other, a time when we all will sit together in peace and the wolf will lie down with the lamb. Here at this table, we get a foretaste of God's banquet. We gather today mediated by electrons, yet still authentically bonded. Is anything too hard for God? We gather here around Christ's own table and all who seek to follow Christ's way are welcome to eat and drink from it. And this table is today in each one of our homes. Come friends and taste grace eternal. Come and see that God is good. Please join us in prayer. How can we thank you, O oh God, for sun and moon and stars, for breath and life and all things good, for your steadfast promise and your faithful love, for the day that is surely coming when all things will be made new. We give you thanks, O oh God, for Jesus, who came to be your living word, to baptize us with spirit and with fire, to feed the hungry and humble the mighty, and to announce the good news of your coming realm. With thanksgiving, we remember how, when the hour had come, Jesus took his place at the table with his friends. He said to them, I will not eat this Passover again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And so with thanks and praise, we offer ourselves to you, sharing this holy meal, remembering Christ's dying and rising and praying, come Lord Jesus. Now pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, upon this bread, this cup, Christ's body and blood given in love for your world. Make us one in the spirit, one in the church, and one with Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, wonderful God, now and forever. And so it is that we pray your prayer, joining our voices with our siblings across the world. And you all at home will find this prayer in your bulletins or else listen and let the words, the beauty of these words from New Zealand sink into your hearts. And there it is. Let us pray. Eternal Little spirit, spirit. Earth, maker, earth maker, maker, pain bearer, pain bearer. Life, life giver, giver. Source, source of all, source of all the, the, that, and that shall, shall, be. shall be. Father all and mother, and mother of us all, all. loving God, in heaven, the hallowing, the hallowing, the hallowing of your name, the universe, the universe, the way of the your children, be followed by the people of the world. Heavenly will be done by all created things, beings, commonwealth of people, to sing our hope and come on earth. Bread, bread we need for today, we absorb from one another. Forgive us. Forgive us. Times of temptation, venting, and strengthen us. From trials, from trials oh, too great oh, to oh, endure, oh, spare oh, us. From the grip, the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you, for you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take the bread that you have brought to your table 
and remember that we are around a beautiful larger table so we can do this together and remember that on that last night of his life with his disciples Jesus took bread and he gave thanks for it and then he broke it and he gave it to them and he said take and eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me. At that same meal, meal gathered with his friends, Jesus took a cup of wine, gave it to them also, and said, drink this, all of you, and remember me. This is the new life, my lifeblood, poured out for many and revealed in my death. Drink this, all of you. Friends, so, go ahead. Mary Louise. Go ahead. <laughs> Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. They are here on my little table and yours and everywhere we are gathering. You may want to go to gallery view um, to watch each other um, partake in communion. We eat and drink together in the love of Christ. Please join me once more in prayer. God, our hope, we give you thanks that you have given us this foretaste of the justice, righteousness, and peace of your promised creation. Strengthen us with this heavenly food as we seek to serve your holy realm. Lead us to joyful expectation of the coming of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
We are grateful to all the many people who were contributors to this service. Thank you in particular, uh, not only to our new members for joining us, but their sponsors and the membership folks and the session for gathering this morning to officially welcome them in. Um, it's a joyful day in the life of this community of faith. Thank you also to our musicians. As you saw, they recorded this week um, and you got to see the beauty of our sanctuary, even though we're not gathered there. And also thanks to the liturgical arts folks and all who contributed to the Christmas tree and the Advent wreath there. The sanctuary looks wonderful, even though we're essentially not there. Um, and thanks to our liturgists today, uh, David and Maddie and Lisa, that was wonderful to have you as well. Next week, we'll be back to our normal um, recorded video services. So look for your email, look in your email for the link for that for next Sunday. Um, and then two weeks from today is our annual Christmas pageant brought to us by our children's ministry. Um, that will be on Sunday, December the 20th. And uh, I know that James and the kids have been well at work on that and many other people contributing. So look forward to that in a couple of weeks. I also wanted to tell you that in the ongoing work of becoming anti-racists in this community of faith, we had a terrific um, retreat, Advent retreat yesterday with Paula Parker. And thanks to Mary Louise for convening that and inviting Paula, that was a, a superb time of her helping us to understand the generational trauma of slavery and then how we as people of faith can attend to the traumas in our own lives to make us better at caring for the world and for especially people who have been stuck in cycles of trauma that's passed down. Um, so I'm really grateful about that. And that is one piece of the ongoing work of all of us in becoming better anti-racists as part of our calling to do justice. Mary Louise, are there other announcements that you'd like to highlight for this week? I don't think so. I think you've covered them, Nolan. Well, then why don't you bless us on our way? And yeah. people, you're welcome to stay for a little time of uh, just casual chatting as our coffee hour afterwards. If you want to do that, just stay on this same call. And with that, Mary Louise. Thank you, Nolan. Friends, as you go, may you have the strength to dream wild dreams of justice and peace and joy that overflows. May you have the humanity to listen to the dreams of others. May you have the confidence to trust that the God who heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt hears your dreams as well. And may you have the conviction to return to this space again, for our best dreams are those that we dream together. In the name of God, the original dreamer, Jesus, the dream come true, and the Holy Spirit who enables us to be those who dream. Go in peace. Go in love. Amen. Amen.